Okay, number one is this. Number five, number ten, number twenty. To do list. And then when we go to work or to school or wherever, we start doing, following the things that are a priority. Number one, tick. Number two, tick. As you achieve them, as you go through them, you put a tick. You put a tick. God gave us 24 hours a day. No more, no less. And for most of us, we would like to do the things that we have put on our to-do list. And as we go throughout the day, we like to tick them. Yes, it's done. Yes, it's completed. It's achieved. As we go throughout the day. This morning, I would like to ask the question, what is life's priority? What is your priority in life? Young people, what is or what are the priorities of life in your life? What are or what is the number one, the number two, not the number five on your list in life? Where are you in your list of priorities? Are you still at, you know, working on number one? Or are you still, or are you on number three? Or number seven? Or number ten? On your to-do list? Where are you? What are the basis of your priority? Why did you put this as number one? As number two? As number three? And so on. What are the basis? What do you expect to achieve after getting number one, number two, number three, and so forth? When do you expect to achieve them? Where are you on your list of priority? The next question is, and then what? When you will achieve number one, number two, number two, number six, number ten, number twenty, number hundred, and then what? This morning I would like you to reconsider your priority. And I am hoping that by the end of our service, by the end of our message this morning, that you will have changed your priority if your priority is not according to God's priority. Amen. Our text this morning is one of those that are very familiar with us. It's a text that I've heard many people read time and time again. But this morning I would like for a few minutes for us to relook, to re to review what is actually what this text is talking to us this morning. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. God is telling us this morning, young people, adults, children, that we must seek God first, and His kingdom, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. The question that I would like to ask us, ask us is that, what is the kingdom of God? And I would like us to open our Bible. Let us try and, 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 and dissect this, uh, this text in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, and see what can we achieve? What can we get out of this text? So the first question is, what is the kingdom of God? And 
I would like to bring just one text to confirm and to respond to the questions that I will bring to us. I would, I would like us to open to Daniel chapter 4 verse 3. On the question is, what is the kingdom of, of God and His righteousness? Since our key text is, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The question then is, what is the kingdom of God? Daniel chapter 4 verse 3. Just a part that, I would, that is relevant to our, to our message this morning. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And His dominion is from generation to generation. So, what is this kingdom of God? It's an eternal kingdom. It's an everlasting kingdom. It's a kingdom that does not have any end. According to prophecy, we see Babylon was prophesied as the kingdom, the first kingdom. And then Medo Persia, Greece, Rome, the ten divided kingdoms. The point is, there is an end to this worldly kingdom. But according to Daniel, Daniel is reminding us this morning that God's kingdom is eternal. God's kingdom does not have any end. This morning I would like, I'd like to recommend that we seek God's everlasting kingdom and dominion. The second question is, how do we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness? How? Psalms 8 verse 17. Psalms, sorry, Proverbs 8 verse 17. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. So, how do we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness? Diligently. Diligently. It's not, it, it, it's not just reading the Bible, just, you know, the surface reading of the Bible. No. We need to study the Bible diligently, which means we've got to spend time in studying the Word of God. We need to allocate time in studying the Word of God. We need to research. We need to look at the Bible concordance to find the meaning. We need to let the Bible speak to us. Diligently, we need to seek the kingdom of God. And then in Mark chapter 12, verse 30, Mark chapter 12, verse 30, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And this is the first commandment. In our seeking the word of God, in our diligent seeking the kingdom of God, it must be with all my heart. It must be with all my mind, my strength. Then, we will find the kingdom of God. What do I seek in the kingdom of God? And His righteousness. What are the things that I, I should seek in the kingdom of God? Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 7. On the question, what do I seek in the kingdom of God? Romans chapter 2, verse 7. Eternal life to those who by patience Continuous in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. What do I seek in the kingdom of God? According to Romans chapter 2 verse 7, eternal life, the glory, the honor, the immortality kingdom of God. Church family this morning, 
When we seek the kingdom of God, this is what God is prepared to give you. God is prepared to give you everything in life. Immortality, honor, glory, eternal life. Eternal life. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, it says, If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. And what are those things that are above? The kingdom of God. The glory of God. Immortality. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. I challenge you this morning, young people and our fathers and mothers and children, to seek the kingdom of God. When do I seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness? When is the best time now. to seek God's kingdom? According to Psalm 63, verse 1, O oh God, you are, my, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Early. How early? What do you think? How early should we seek God? Now. First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. Now. And then if we go back to what uh, King Solomon said, he said, young people, how early? Remember thy what? Creator. Thy creator in the days. That's right. It's not only talking about, you know, when you get up in the morning, it is talking about when, when we are still young. We should seek God and His righteousness. Early. Oh God, You are my God. Early will I seek You. My soul thirst for You. What does that mean? How often do we get thirsty? Very often, isn't it? We eat three times a day, eh? Or for some people, maybe seven times a day. But for, for a lot of people, three times a day. We have the breakfast, the lunch, and the dinner. But here, how do often we, we, we thirst? More than we eat. So, what, what Solomon, what, uh, what Psalms is saying here is, that's how we should respond to the seeking of God's kingdom. As often as we drink, we can go without food for a couple of, for probably for, for some people, months. There's hunger strike. There are people that goes on hunger strike, you know, four weeks, six weeks before they die. For water, probably a couple of days, you die. You die. When do we seek God early? And how often? <coughs> when you are thirsty, try and seek God. In fact, Paul was saying to us that we should be praying when? Continuously. Praying continuously. Which means in our seeking of the kingdom of God, it should be continuously. Continuously. Daniel. How many times does Daniel pray? Three times a day. Morning. Afternoon evening. But here, the suggestion is, let's seek God early. Early. Where do I seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness? Where? Psalm 63 verse 2. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Where do I seek the kingdom of God? In the church, according to, 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 to Psalms, I have looked for you in the sanctuary. Don't stay home. When there is service, when there is a sermon, a message, come and seek God. Come and receive God in His sanctuary. Where do I find God? In his sanctuary. Psalms 119, 
so, uh, sorry, Psalm 77, verse 13. Your ways, O Lord, is where? In the sanctuary. Where do I see God? In the sanctuary. In the church. The kingdom of God. Psalms 119, verse 5. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Where do I, 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 I seek uh, the kingdom of God? In the word. Again. How much time do we spend in the word of God? Someone, someone I heard say that, you know, we tithe our, our, our offering, our, our earning. We should tithe our, our time as well. So, if, if we tithe our time 24 hours a day, how many times for God? Almost two and a half hours a day. Almost two and a half hours a day. If we are to tithe our time for God. And then, you know, take the seven days because the seven days is God's day. So, imagine, am I spending two and a half hours a day for God? Why do I seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness? Amos chapter 5 verse 4 For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live. Amen. So why? According to Amos, Seek me and live. That's why we need to seek God's kingdom and his righteousness and then Daniel chapter 4 verse 3 again it reminds us that the kingdom the kingdom of God is an everlasting kingdom his dominion is from generation to generation family of God this morning we've discovered the reason the what the how the then the and the whatever about God's kingdom when we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, we have everything. Amen. We have everything. In fact, if we look at the last part of our, of our key text, and all these things shall be added unto you. I've heard people say that, you know, when we seek God first, we will have the cars, we will have a couple of houses, we will have... Uh, you know, the things of this world, it's not referring to the things of this world. It's referring to the, the things that we've gone through this morning in the text that I brought to us. Because it means when we have eternal life, we have everything. We have everything. And this everything is referring to the kingdom of God. The blessings of having the kingdom of God as part of our life. What is your priority in life? Your priority today determines your destiny. Yeah. There's only two choices. God's kingdom or the devil's kingdom. There's no sitting on the fence. There's only two choices. Whatever your priority today, today determines your tomorrow. I am hoping that if your priority is not according to God's priority this morning, that you will rearrange your priority. Amen. To make sure that the kingdom of God, to make sure that His righteousness is your priority. Because if that is your priority, you gain everything. You gain everything. So the challenge is, how many of us is making the Word of God our priority early in the morning? How many of us 
is making the kingdom of God and His righteousness the first and the last of their life. Church family, this morning, if you have forgotten everything that I've said, that's okay. I have brought one illustration this morning that I hope that it will stick to your mind. I want you this morning to imagine, I want you to use your imagination this morning, that this is an endless cord or rope. It doesn't have any air. Alright? I want you to use that imagination. I know there's an end to this one, but I want you to use your imagination, imagination that this cord doesn't have any air. It goes on and on. I want, I want also you to imagine that this is our life. Some of us, uh, uh, some of us, are being blessed with 80 years old or more. For some, maybe 70, 60, 50, 40. So I want us to imagine that this is our life, just here. For some, we are seeking the world here, and yet our life is only 70 years old, or for some of us, 80. For those who are lucky, maybe 100 years. But we spend our time, our energy, our strength in seeking things of this world. And yet, God's plan for you and I is eternity. Eternity. There's no end. The question then is, why are we wasting our time here? That our life is only contained here with 70 years, with 60 years, and maybe with 100 years. Why are we seeking the world? And the world will end here with all its riches. With all its, whatever you call it, this is life. And yet, God has eternity for us. No end. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and you get everything. Amen. Amen. May God bless us all.